All right guys, wheelchair operator here. Wanted to make a video comparing my new PVS 15 C's to my Acton Black DT and VGs. So I want to start off with some of the similarities between these two units and then I'll go into some of the unique features. First off, they are both articulating binos. So you can articulate them as so. They both accept the same type of image intensifiers. They both have captive battery caps, IR floods, dovetail shoes, and toggle switches on the front. They are also rated to 20 meters uh, submersible or 66 feet. And now I'll get into some of the differences. Now, one of the main things right off the bat um, that I will mention is that the, the DT and VGs have a lot more articulation. As you can see there, they articulate a lot. Um, so compare that to the PBS 15s, that's as much as you can articulate them. So uh, another big difference about these is the weight. Uh, the DTN VGs are 18.8 .8 ounces and the PVS 15 C's are 22.9 and I will say you can definitely tell the difference by just picking these units up you can definitely feel the weight difference um, the PVS 15's take a single AA battery and it's rear loading on the DT and VG uh, it takes a single CR123 battery, but you can get an adapter to run a AA. And uh, new on the market, you can also get um, an adapter that lets you run a ANVIS or PVS31 style battery pack. One thing to note as well in regards to um, the power settings and whatnot is that on the DT and VGs, if you articulate them enough, the pod will shut off. So if you have this one over your eye and you articulate one of these enough, this pod will shut off while this pod stays on. And then if you turn this articulated enough, they will both shut off. And then when you articulate them back down, they will turn back on. Okay. On the PVS 15, you can articulate them to the max amount and they will not turn off. So that is something to note. On the PVS 15, you have four settings. You have off, your first on setting, and you'll see there is a second on setting, and then you also have your infrared flood. Okay. So what the first on setting is going to do is that um, it will not turn on unless if you attach it to your mount. Um, and then also, if you have it on the first on setting and you detach it from the mount, it'll turn off. Or if you flip these up to stow them, they will turn off. And there's a little ball inside the housing that makes a, has a contact. So when you flip them up, they'll turn off. With the DT and VGs, you have off, on, and then your infrared flood. Um, now, one thing to know about the DT and VGs is that when you flip them up to stow them, they will turn off automatically. And if you detach them from the mount, they're not going to turn off either. So I've actually had these DT and VGs turn off on me when I didn't want them to turn off. When I was looking at the stars at night, pretty much straight vertical, um, and they actually turned off. So. Uh, it's kind of a nice feature to have on the PBS 15s. Also, one thing to note is that they both have 
IR floods, infrared floods. And uh, what's unique about the PBS 15s is that they have this little thing that swivels. And what that does is, um, if you're familiar with night vision or if you're not familiar with night vision, when you turn on your infrared illuminator, it's just a wide spill. It spills everywhere and there's no centralized hot spot or circle. Um, whereas, you know, on the DTMVGs, you're just stuck with the spill that spills out everywhere. Um, and on the PBS 15s, you have that option, but you can also flip this and it will give you a centralized hot spot and, uh, it's a lot more bright as well. So if you're looking at something that's further away or you don't want it to just spill out, you can switch this over your illuminator, which is a very cool feature to have. It's almost like the PBS7 um, illuminator, except for you can't adjust uh, the diameter of the circle when you have this um, turned on. So, um, like I said, these both take the same types of tubes, uh, 101.60s, and you can actually make these accept 11.769s if you cut off the pigtail and install a resistor. Um, one of the uh, differences about these is that the DT and VGs can accept standard PVS, um, ocular lenses as well as ether eyepieces and then up front on the objectives you can um, they can accept PBS 14 style um, objectives which is what is installed here now and they will also accept ANVIS style objectives now on the PBS 15s the um, objectives and eyepieces are both proprietary to the PVS-15 as well as the PVS-18, which is basically the monocular version of the PVS-15. So uh, something to keep in mind, I will say that I have used PVS glass, I've used ANVIS glass, and I've used um, the 15 slash 18 glass. And this is definitely the best glass I've ever looked through. Uh, and it's arguably the best in the industry. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, also, one of the big drawbacks to the DTNVG is there is not a point for retention. Like on your helmet, you'll see that they oftentimes have the bungees with the little hooks on the end, and there's no real good place to install uh, a retention lanyard. Meaning if you have a breakaway feature, on your mount like the Wilcox L4 G24 does. If you have the breakaway feature engaged, you would want to have a retention lanyard so that you don't drop your, you know, $10,000 nods on the ground. Uh, so I've seen a lot of people, they'll, they will wrap, you know, 550 cord around the housing and whatnot. Not ideal by any means, but it, I guess it works. Uh, one of the things that I do like about the PBS 15s is that you can see right here on each side, they have these little attachment points where you, and it works perfectly with the helmet bungees. Um, so you can attach those to each side and it will also prevent um, wobble and play and your night vision because you don't want these to move around at all when you're using them. So, um, one thing to also note is that the PBS 15s are made here in America. So they are ITAR protected, um, act in black that makes the DTMVGs and the DTMVG or the DTMVS, excuse me. They are based in Europe and they have retailers for people that are outside the United States where they can buy these housings and they can put their Photonis Gen 2 Plus tubes inside. Um, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, if these are here in America, you cannot export them. If you're not feel familiar with ITAR, um, look it up. It's, you know, basically export laws. 
So um, with that said, I think that's really about it. These are both really good units. Uh, they both have their pros and they both have their cons. Uh, the object of this video is not to tell you which one to get, but rather just going over some of the differences of the housings and what have you. So um, I appreciate all the support so far. It really means a lot. If you like videos like this, uh, definitely like and subscribe, share this with your friends and whatnot. And I will see you in the next video.